Hello, you multi magical, mysterious moustache managers. And thank you to David Ross 8709 for that malt mention. Well, all you maltsters and malt curious, welcome to the Bothy. Welcome to Ralphie Review 1003. And um, in this review, I'm following a little mini theme as we come up to the end of the year um, on non Scotch whiskies. And I have reviewed earlier, uh, in, in the form of a world tour, a number of whisky varieties in terms of smell and taste from around the world, from India, from Sweden, from Tasmania. Um, and I've also latterly had one from Brazil, which is not a country we expect whisky to come from, from. But what we do expect is whisky to come from Ireland. Ireland is very famous for it. And here's a good illustrative example, which I'm going to bring to your attention, because this year there has certainly been more available of this particular version of the Spot Range. Now, the Spot Range are produced by Middleton Distillery, uh, probably more known for the Red Breast series of traditional Irish pot st still whisky, which is a combination of malted and unmalted barley. And that, that theme continues in the Spot series, which Middleton produce uh, allegedly for an independent whisky retailer, spirits retailer based in Dublin called, um, <laughs> they called again, Mitchell and Son. <laughs> There you go. There seems to be a lot of Mitchells involved in whiskey. Funny that. Um, you're most likely to see a spot whiskey called Green Spot. This is the entry level. It's bottled at 40%, chill filtered. And you'll also then, if you want to upgrade a little bit, you will find the yellow spot which is bottled at higher strength of 46% and it's aged 12 years and there's an age statement currently on the bottlings of Yellow Spot. And then at really at the kind of top of the range, you have Red Spot, which is 15 year old um, traditional Irish pot still whiskey, bottled again at 46%. And certainly in the UK, you're paying about 115 to 130 pounds a bottle for that. But having said that, it's really well composed, the red spot. I was particularly impressed with it when I reviewed it um, a wee while ago. But this is one I haven't yet reviewed. I've had a few samples over the years from friends. But I couldn't buy it because it simply wasn't available. This is the Blue Spot, which is a seven-year-old age-stated whiskey bottled at cask strength. Now, it's really the only one bottled at cask strength, apart from very kind of limited edition designer collectible versions of Green Spot, one of which is currently available from a major London online whiskey retailer. Uh, of a 99, 1991, it's a 26 year old green spot whiskey in a nice wooden box and it's yours for one and a half thousand pounds. Yes, you heard me, one and a half thousand pounds. Let me give you some advice if you're considering buying it. Uh, don't, I, to whiskey drinkers based in the real world, it's not worth the money. It's designed as a collector's edition, as a fancy edition, as a, an investable edition, which may or may not realize some profit for the investor uh, for a long, long time. Um, they'll just have to wait and see. Meanwhile, you want to wait, you've, you've, you're tired of waiting to see what I think of this blue spot. So let's get stuck into it. It's not the same 
as when I last tasted it. The event from the bottle that I bought a few months ago is a lot fresher. And I'm not necessarily meaning that as a compliment. Um, I just think there are more refill and less fresh fill casks involved in the batch compared to previous, previous editions of Blue Spot. As soon as you nose it, lovely, unpeated, fresh fruit, grapes, melon, little bit of touch of mango in the background, and you're getting that little uh, slightly minty note, that little evergreen note, a chlorophyll note as well, um, coming from the fact that they've incorporated unmalted barley into malted barley, which is the style of traditional pot still Irish whiskey, and it changes the flavour, without a doubt. Taste-wise, first taste, and bear in mind this has been bottled at 58.9%, so it's really going to be strong alcoholic nippy stuff. I know what to expect, I'm prepared for it. You'll be prepared for it when you make sure that your first sip is a small one. The experience is totally led by a harsh alcoholic nip. Green ginger, vanilla, wood juice, American white oak, Queris albi, wood juice. I'm adding a lot of water to this because at the moment, raw, straight from the bottle, it's simply far too harsh. It is not unexpected because it is a young whiskey, it's only seven years old, and it's been bottled at cask strength, and it's been produced at a big distillery, where they, in my opinion, have certain protocols of production to observe, um, and they're basically in a hurry to still. Uh, they're in a hurry to get the product through the stills. It's not a criticism, it's an observation. I'm just calling it as I'm finding it. Once you've added water, and I've added 10 millilitres of water, which is quite a lot for any whiskey I review, it certainly calms it down. It certainly inhibits that harsh, minty, almost um, chlorophyll. Yeah, actually, chlorophyll menthol, um, naphthalene. There's a slight touch of naphthalene about it when it's neat. Naphthalene is a chemical you find in mothballs, which, you know, it's got a very, very distinctive smell. And I'm getting a touch of that when it's neat. When I come back, having added the water, the nose has significantly mellowed, as indeed it should be doing. It's become far more manageable and far more interesting. If you're not adding any water to this, good luck to you. You bought the bottle, it's your gig, but I'm telling you right now, you're not tasting much from this whiskey. You're only getting the concentrated condensed version. Um, and that's, that's the way it is. There you have it. So back to the whiskey now. What's it taste like now we've added a decent amount of water and left it a couple of minutes, which is quite important as well. Crisp. Green apple. Russet apple. Slightly nutty. Almond. Hint of walnut in the background. Some soft spice, cardamom. I would say there's a touch of clove in there, but it's really more like bitter cassis. Now, cassis is a kind of shorthand version of cinnamon, so it's not proper cinnamon, but as a cinnamon note. So if you imagine if it was uh, a kind of vague cinnamon note with a real bitter tang to it, that's what you're getting here in the taste. What will happen after a few minutes is the casks will start to exert themselves. And they do it very assertively. So they're very assertive in their assertions. And it's not really helping the whiskey. So you have to be patient 
and you have to give it time. It will subside after about 25 to 30 minutes. It will tone down and that real virgin oak thing that we all know so well from modern contemporary American white oak Queris alba casks, it will subside and it needs to subside because it's imposing too much in the natural complexity of this style of traditional pot still Irish whiskey, which is why we're buying it in the first place, why we're paying the premium. I mean, this is a strong brand. It is a strong brand, but I'm now wondering, is it, be going, is it going to become a victim of its own popularity? As there's more demand, you see, they need more batches. They need more casks for these batches. Are they going to dip into the less premium casks and use a proportion in the batch of refill casks rather than fresh fill casks because I can tell you right now when I've tasted this before twice in the last four years from samples I've received from friends um, there was definitely fresher cask engagement it was less nippy it was more rounded it was more it was more of a genuine authentic delivery of the dynamism of Irish pot still style. This is perfectly competent, by the way, but I really do think that some folk slightly overrate it um, because within the Irish whiskey fan club, the greatest fandom is reserved for traditional pot still Irish whiskey which means that any distillery in Ireland that's not actually doing it at some point is really cutting off an income supply big time. And that's my opinion. I've given it a bit, few more minutes, so I'm going to give it another go over nose and taste before I give my Irish whiskey. That's whiskey with an E, by the way. So I better look out the card in preparation for it. There you go, whiskey. Now, is it a malt whiskey or a blended whiskey? I'd call it a blend of whiskey, blended whiskey because it's a blend of grains, malted and unmalted. But in fairness to the corrections I've had from Irish whiskey drinkers, I see the point of view. It's 100% barley, right? So coming from a Scotsman who usually reviews Scotch whiskey, to, to call Irish pot still whiskey blended, if you put it in the context of stock Scotch whisky, it's suggesting by implication that it's a lesser whisky. And frankly, this is not the case. So I'm going to call it malt whisky, right? I'm going to call it malt whisky. This is for, in fairness. So to conclude, getting some floral notes, some green notes, some dandelion leaf, um, slight light green fennel, sage, cardamom, mace, green ginger, most certainly. Complex mint, I can't place it as apple mint or spearmint. There's a kind of homogenized multi-mint flavor going on. Um, and there's also something that's called euthamol. <laughs> euthamol is in fact a toothpaste. So there's a slight old school minty toothpaste note in there as well, which to be honest is quite interesting because it's exotic. That's in the nose and the taste. It's transforming already. For those of you who drink your whiskey neat, I feel sorry for you because you're selling yourself short. This is a very, very good illustrative example of a whiskey whose complexity in the event is completely masked by the strength of the alcohol in the bottle. Um, and it's only when you add water and are generous with the water that you will start to 
un unravel that complexity which is existing because of the style and the way the whiskey's made. Um, it's it's lovely. It's growing on me. And I already know from having tasted it a few times that the more I leave this glass into the evening, the more it will continue to grow on me. And the more the, the harshness of the virgin oak will recede and be replaced with something more toffied, natural, mellow, more fructose, more interesting, more distinctive of what is in fact a traditional pot still whisky. Seven star mouthwash. And I mean that as a compliment, by the way, because I didn't say three star or two star. Didn't even say five star. I said seven star. Don't get more than seven stars. I'm giving this 82 out of 100. And it is malt whiskey with an E. Whiskey with an E. When you come back to my extras, I'm going to be talking a bit more about Irish whiskey, um, specifically pot still whiskey. I'm really just going to kind of have a wee riff about it. Uh, and I hope you'll join me for Ralphie Review 1003 Extras. And as the saying goes, malt mates, you've heard it before, you're hearing it again. There you have it. <laughs>